The opioid crisis in the US is costing lives and a huge amount of money. Uh, a trend to uh, reduce medicine dependence and to decrease the financial pressure on Medicare is the use of innovative neuromodulation implanted devices. So I have two experts in this field with me today, although virtually. I have Raoul Saini, CEO of uh, Teliatri and founder, and Dr. Krishnan Chakravarti, CEO of NXT STEAM, also founder. So maybe to start, uh, Dr. Krishnan, would you have anything to add on the uh, impact of the opioid crisis in the US? Yeah, great, great question, Tani. Um, you know, look, it's it's fascinating. Um, you know, our society has gone arguably from one of the uh, major public health issues to another one with the current COVID-19 situation all over the world. And one of the things that um, prior to this pandemic was a fascinating amount of um, attention being drawn to the opiate epidemic was primarily because the statistics were staggering. Uh, on average, um, you look at the cost of the healthcare system just within the US uh, totaling over $500 billion. And you look at the consumption of opiates, oxycodone, 95% are were primarily in the US compared to the rest of the world. And to date, um, on average, 120 to 150 deaths per day can be attributed to a lot of the overdose issues. But what is actually even more pressing is come after the uh, pandemic, access to opiates is also fueling a lot of the major issues with how we're addressing this pandemic, as well as the epidemic that was going on prior. So in no time in history are interventional pain docs being challenged to look at other modalities to effectively treat pain. And I think um, this entire situation that we're in is only necessitates the importance for uh, developing more cost effective, innovative and forward thinking technology. And of course, this is also an increasing problem in Europe as well, right. as you may know. Absolutely. Uh, I understand that uh, neuromodulation may treat conditions such as Parkinson's disease and OCD. The, what other conditions could it treat? And actually, how does it work? So let me explain in the most conventional sense. Neuromodulation basically encompasses you know, stimulation of nerves, uh, our nervous system mostly using implantable devices in the central, peripheral, uh, the autonomic uh, nervous system that we have, also in the deep brain. And, uh, you know, it, involves an implantable uh, pulse generator, what we call an IPG, uh, with electronics and battery embedded inside, which connects to a lead that goes uh, to the end where we are trying to stimulate, and, and the lead has electrodes at the end of, uh, end on one side, and is connected to the IPG on the other side. Uh, it needs to be in close proximity to the target uh, where we are trying to do uh, the stimulation. So that's, that's the overall hardware architecture that sits inside of the body. And, and, and just to add to that, you know, I, I think we just recently put out a beautiful paper looking at the impact of uh, traditional spinal cord stimulation for Parkinson's patients. In fact, we had great outcomes in both uh, pain as well as motor symptoms. But today that market is seeing a tremendous expansion, whether it's indication in peripheral vascular disease, whether it's in uh, treating uh, even original anginal pain was where uh, initial spinal cord stimulation was approved in Europe. And it's seen its growth in all different types of back pain, including CRPS. Um, and, you know, even to the effect today, there's growing evidence that spinal cord injury can be treated with the appropriate lead placement in portions of the spinal cord where cord transection um, can get people back to being mobile. So I think we're just scratching the surface of our understanding of its potential. Um, and it's excited to be working with Talaitri and Lika on, on that kind of forefront. Now, in terms of product design, uh, clearly if those devices need to be implanted in the body nearer to the target, they must be very small. Could you comment on the, the, the features of, of this new uh, neuromodulation devices, maybe some that Teliatri is working on, and how that differs to a current technology. 
Yeah, so that's that's a very interesting question and a very important one too. Uh, an implant needs to be minimally invasive, right? Small footprint, very energy efficient. Uh, and intrinsically, it needs to be safe for the human physiology, right? Because it's all interacting with the, the human physiology. But the state of the art, uh, say, for example, what uh, Christian just pointed to, you know, a spinal cord stimulator, for example, it uses a bulky battery, which in turn leads to, you know, a, a larger footprint of the implant. Uh, almost about half the size of my fist is the smallest ones that are available, irrespective of a, a primary or a secondary battery architecture. Uh, and we have built at Telayatri some of the smallest, most complicated implants in the world, uh, about the size of a grain of rice with hundreds of electrodes. So, you know, the electronics are already there on the minuscule size, the minimal invasive part. Uh, but none of them have an internal battery so far because the required miniature battery just does not exist. You know, we need this high energy density battery, which is uh, which is just not there, period. But clearly, um, a battery with high energy and very small volume with added features like safety, longevity and reliability, that's a big, that's a big ask uh, for the battery industry. Um, Erika is develop developing such device uh, using a solid state battery technology and, and with that technology we can make millimeter scale batteries with a uh, very high energy density. Dr. Krishnan, do you think that the development of batteries is uh, a key challenge in progressing the development of neuromodulation devices? The reality is, let me give you some statistics, um, one-fifth of the human population has some form of pain. One-fifth. The number of implants to date, yearly, give or take statistically, is about 100,000. So there is a clear um, issue in terms of cost, access, um, implantation technique, and the ability for patients to get the therapy, to really make it an effective therapy worldwide. And to Nextim and to Liatry and the partnership that we have with you guys, really is to change that conversation altogether. I think the space has seen a tremendous amount of innovation in the standpoint of finding what to deliver current-wise to get a therapeutic outcome. Where it's missing is hardware advancements. So I think we've come to the point where we have really perfected clinically to the best of our ability with the measurement tools that are there, getting someone from a pain score of an eight down to a one or two. But the reality is if I look at a bill that comes in from insurance companies, it's almost $100,000 would give or take the time for a physician to work up a patient, put him in the operating room and get the device in. So the vision for this space in the future is has to be around miniaturization, has to be around access, has to be around ease of implantation. And I think we are at the forefront of that. And that requires a really rethinking design, rethinking manufacturing, rethinking cost of production. And you know, it, you know, the, the irony in this is that Rahul and I actually started talking about third world countries having access to something like this, right? I mean, we want to make it accessible to more broader demographic of people. Yeah, I actually think, you know, the implications are absolutely unprecedented for chronic conditions specifically. You know, if, if you look at implanted devices, they are the last resort therapy right now, right? Just think about what you can do if you can bring that to mainstream medicine. Right? From, you know, the time saved for, by eliminating long surgeries, you know, need for hospitals and operating rooms and, uh, you know, eliminating physiological effects uh, and issues, you know, implant site pain for the ICG, infection rate, revision surgeries. I mean, there are so many different complications that can, that can occur. And, and then think about the cost savings, right, from shrinking the operation time uh, with an injectable device, you know, all in the short term to the long term, uh, across the board, in every step of the way. Uh, I think this can really, truly bring an injectable electroceutical, uh, you know, which already has very good efficacy, you know, with efficacious therapies to the market. I mean, that is real disruption. Agreed.